Now, after months of the most acrimonious build-ups to any Congress you find on these shores, it all comes down to today. The NDC National Delegates Congress is here, and your election headquarters is up and running. Welcome. My name is Evans Mensah, and I'm joined today by the regular suspects, Raymond Aqua, who's joining us, of course, with his big NDC Bible you see right in front of him. And then also joining me is, of course, you know, the man himself, the Methuselah, who has been chewing everything NDC and will be sharing his thoughts with us also here on the show, Wings Tengamwa. The two gentlemen are ready to go. Uh, Raymond? Very much so. Okay, and Winston? Very ready. You want to stay with us because we have this covered for you across the board. We have the most stellar of guests joining us across the day into tomorrow because we're anticipating this is going to travel way into Saturday, considering that you have more than 10,000 delegates who will be casting their votes to determine who will become the national chairman. And that is the race we are all watching very closely. We are calling it the Clash of the Titans. It is a heavyweight bout. It is one of those that you call an undisputed bout. Two individuals who've never lost an internal national election. But at the end of the Congress, one of them will go home tasting defeat for the very first time. And that is why this has become one of the most acrimonious we've seen. And we are bracing ourselves for what we expect to be a major day that could prove to have some surprises in there as well. Across the country, this is the place you want to be. We have a crack team of reporters on the ground, led by my colleague MFR Powell, uh, Elton Brobe, uh, Bless Setsuga, and a host of others who will be bringing you the minute blow by blow account, visuals, the most interesting interviews with the big heavy guns. We bring it all of them here to your election headquarters. And it is to the grounds that we start our coverage today our special coverage of the ndc national delegates congress live from the accra sports stadium where mfa powell and her team are ready to give us a first taste of what the congress grounds look like mfa powell give us the insight the 17th of december 2022 and is the day for the 10th national delegates congress of the national democratic congress we are currently at the accra sports stadium this is your election headquarters live on the joy news channel on joy 99.7 fm myjoyonline.com and all our social media platforms i'll first walk you through uh, the designations as it stands now at the accra sports stadium where i'm standing now is supposed to be the popular stand where the delegates all those who will be voting, the about 9,000 delegates, will be seated all around the stadium, all the way to the other side. Above here, as you see, this is where the MPs, where they say this is the VVIP area. MPs, former MPs, former ministers, this is where they will be seated. Of course, they are delegates as well. And then from here, this is where all the delegates, like I said, about 9,000 of them, will be choosing the national chairman, the deputy national, the national chairman, the deputy national organizers, the general secretary position. And this has been uh, very acrimonious as we see so far. But this is the D-Day and we'll get to know how it all goes down. 14 positions up for grabs for the National Delegates Congress. But as uh, we know already, about four of these positions have already gone, which is the youth organizer, which has been injuncted. We don't know whether that is going to happen. We don't know. The party mentioned that they're actually working on that. But we don't know if Pablo, as we call him, Giorgio Pariado, will get to be sworn in today. But this is how it plays out so far. We've been speaking to the planning committee of the party, but as it stands, we will get to know how it goes down. But... Will it be that two-horse race that we're all looking out for? The national chairman position, Samuel Ofusuampofo, as against General Asiedun Ketia. That's Johnson Asiedun Ketia and the others as well. But the national organizer position up for grabs also. We know that it's also up for grabs. The deputy general secretary, general secretary position, that also between Dr. Peter Otokuno and then also Elvis Ifriyankra. We also know 
about 50 Yavi Kwete. And these are all the positions that are up for grabs today. We'll be taking a look at it. I'm now in the inner perimeter. I must say that when the event all starts, there will be nothing happening here today. No media person will be allowed in this inner perimeter. So this is how the grass looks like at the Accra Sports Stadium. This is another thing that we'll be talking about later. This is our Accra Sports Stadium. And this is how the pitch looks like. But this is another issue that we'll be talking about subsequently. But as you see also, uh, this is where the podium is. And it is a one-man podium. Whoever speaks comes on to here and speaks. But on your far right, as you see, uh, Fruit will pan the camera for you to see. On your far right is where the National Council of Elders will be seated. They will all be here. And then also the national executives um, expired. Um, some of them will be expired by the time voting starts. They will also be seated there. So before the speeches, they will walk all the way there. And um, interestingly, um, some of the organizers are already here. So I will get to interact with my colleagues. We will be on the ground today. Uh, we'll get to that interaction so far. I'll be speaking to my colleagues Samuel Imbura, uh, Brace also here, and then the rest of the team. But thankfully, I have with me um, here in the inner perimeter, the former national youth organizer of the NDC, Ludwig Lodge. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Joy News Channel. I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much, MFA, and uh, thanks for covering our program. It's been a while. Where have you been? We're working. Uh, you don't need to be an executive member to be able to contribute your quota to the NDC. So. We've been doing ours under the uh, carpet and uh, we are out to make sure that Congress is successful as a planning committee member. We've been working over the past few days to make sure that we have a successful Congress. And I can see, I can, you can see, as you can see, everything is ready, set for Congress in the next few hours. Well, we'll talk about your position or your former position that has uh, become very topical, apart from the national chairman position and maybe the general secretary position. The youth um, organizer position has been very controversial. And as we speak, there's an injunction on the elected um, you know, national youth organizer not to be sworn in. I know there have been um, backroom workings and all, but first, what, what really are your thoughts about what is going on? Well, I think that uh, it, it also shows that the party is becoming more attractive to young people and they are eager to, to contribute their quota in making sure that the success for the party. But at the same time, that youthful exuberance is being over uh, exploited. And I think that it's something we need to work on. And uh, I can assure you that once we sort out and we put in a new executive, we'll try to come together, particularly the former youth organizers that have gone through the system, bring our younger brothers together and make sure that we sanitize the system and advise and train, mentor them to be able to understand the dynamics of managing the youth across the board. But is this what you were actually expecting? Well, sometimes these things uh, happen. I mean, we are a political entity. It's a non-governmental organization. You, we are doing it to help our party and our country. And so sometimes you, 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 some of these things happen and all you need to do is to get a team of uh, senior people, bring them together and talk to them. And I think that once we finish the Congress, we'll solve these outstanding issues. Well, so will George Operado be sworn in today? Um, how, what have we, what have we done about not, the injunction? I am not a member of the legal team. And so I'd, I'm not sure what the current situation is. I'm sure the legal team is on top of their job and they'll make sure that everything is under control. And what are your expectations for today's Congress? Well, as I said to your sister radio station, delegates will start moving from the Congress village at nine o'clock. They'll be seated across, as you see, the top is for the VIPs. Uh, delegates will sit all around on the yellow, yellow seats. The days is for the National Executive Committee members, the Council of Elders, and the former president. This is where people will be speaking from. So when you are called, you will be speaking from the, the stage here. We have given full uh, authority to the Ghana Police Service to provide security for this Congress. And I'm sure when you're entering, you've seen that they are in total control. And so we have directed that the Ghana Police Service will manage security from the beginning to the end. We are told they are bringing about 1,500 to 2,000 men to protect us. We have also directed that nobody would wear any delegate's T-shirt in the stadium. You can do it outside the stadium. But in the stadium, you are not allowed to wear delegate's T-shirt because we don't want any confrontation among supporters. We have also directed that every single delegate I have access to um, 
candidates have access to delegates. That's why we put all of them at the Congress Village. Yesterday, they interacted with them in their numbers, and we think that is also... The other issue that I want to stress on is that if you don't have accreditation, please sit at home. We have three over 300 media houses accredited. What join you? We have 300 media stations accredited to broadcast this uh, program live. And so we don't want anybody to have confrontation with the security forces. So stay home, watch delegates, observers, media, and our special guest. Those are the people we've accredited. This is not a party rally. This is delegates conference to elect leaders. Once we are done with this, we may or organize a national rally where everybody will be invited. And if you make a mistake and fall far of the law, you have yourself to blame. So we want to advise our supporters, a number of uh, TV stations, including Joy News, all out there, uh, Weasel TV, uh, Metro TV, whatever you think about it, they are there. Watch any of them that you want to watch, but don't come here with the mind of coming to create trouble. You will pay uh, dearly for it. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lud Ludwig Holoje, the former national youth organizer of the NDC. And uh, thankfully, we've been joined also here by Madame Joyce Bauer Mukhtari. He's the spokesperson to the former president, John Dramani Mahama, and he will be speaking tonight, uh, today, also at the Accra Sports Stadium. So let's have a brief interaction with her. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, madam. A very good morning to you and good to see you, Jifa. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. MFA, yes, MFA, right. it's all the fa is okay. Yeah, so, don't worry, if I is around too, so yes. good so to see you. All that is going on, uh, we just want to know what exactly the former president is thinking about everything that is going on in the party so far. I think basically he believes that he, the party is very robust, that there is enormous interest in the party, there is enormous love for the future of this party, and I believe you can tell by the caliber of people who are vying for various positions within the party that we are poised and ready for victory come 2024. And of course, I am looking forward to President Mahama himself putting himself up to contest for flag bearership after this and then hopefully lead us to the next election. I believe that he is convinced that we are well prepared, we are well sized, that after today, we will all be ready for what comes next, which is to wrestle power from the... Uh, from the new patriotic party. So yes, I believe that Jifa today is actually very serious business. It's almost like the annual general meeting of the political party, the NDC. We are looking forward to our delegates from all the 16 regions of Ghana, and of course, some special delegates as well. So we hope that we'll have a very peaceful uh, delegates conference. We hope that we'll undertake the elections with the seriousness that is required. We also hope that our delegates will go out there and elect for themselves leaders that they believe will take us to the next level. You know, there's a certain caution that I always give. And I believe that most of the uh, contestants have actually spoken to their supporters. And I always ask myself when someone asks me a question, what will President Mahama, my boss, say under the same circumstances? I believe that we should all look at the persons who lead us and emulate their fantastic example of peace, of modesty, of affability, of tolerance, and above all, if you believe in democracy, this is an exercise that actually also goes to augment our democracy. So I don't expect anything from anybody but to undertake this duty with the seriousness that is required. And of course, the media is here. I know the Electoral Commission will be joining us, our party elders, our you know, delegates, and various uh, regional chairmen from across the country, and many other people. We have a few members of the Diplomatic Corps who will be joining us, some observers from other jurisdictions, and yes, friends of the party also from across the world. I also look forward to our opponents, the New Patriotic Party, the Elephants. I'm sure like every other year, they would come here and probably come and offer some support or some advice uh, and all of the other political parties. So for me personally, I think that the day has finally arrived. Let's see what the Lord will do for us. But I call for caution, especially amongst individuals and their supporters, that we should ensure that it goes very peacefully, that the former flag bearer has actually cautioned against violence, against any unnecessary conflicts. We are one family. And of course, once this is over, 
who have to live with one another. What is he actually saying about the acrimonious campaign that we've seen? Some also saying that he's behind certain, um, yeah. you know, candidates yeah. amongst others. We've heard him say yeah. he doesn't support any candidates, but most people do not believe it. But yeah. you've seen the acrimonious campaigning. What, what exactly is he yeah. saying about it? I'm sure there have been backroom meetings amongst others. We've seen pictures. What exactly is he telling you? So, so many meetings, so many interactions. Even yesterday, there were conversations around it, and I believe that I think the most acrimonious was the one surrounding the youth contest. And I'm sure you know that he met uh, our brother, Sami Jinfi. He also spoke to our brother, Pablo. And I know that one of the contestants has actually gone to court, and there's an injunction on swearing in the uh, newly elected uh, youth organizer. I'm sure that eventually cool heads will prevail and uh, waters will calm down. You know how it is when these things happen. But you see, I think that all this is happening because the party is very, very attractive. People have also realized that considering how abysmally, how the phenomenal failure of our current government and administration, I believe people need a certain political party. A party that will work for the aspirations of the people, a party that will meet the expectations of the good people of Ghana, and a party that the citizens believe will come to work for them and not for others. I have no doubt in my mind that the current hardship is also one of the driving forces because it tells you that people want a certain change. People have a certain expectation. We all want a certain type of Ghana. And MFI, you and I know we have these conversations all the time. There is a certain leadership that we require. A leadership of tolerance, a leadership where everybody feels a part of governance, a leadership where everybody feels that we own the government that is in power, and above all, a government that will also work for the good of our country. I have no doubt in my mind that President Mahama will continue to speak to the Ghana that all of us want, the Ghana that our children will be proud to inherit. So I look forward to this day being a very, very peaceful day, a day that will deliver for Ghanaians hope and enormous affection and love for the National Democratic Are Congress. Are voting today, by the way? I am a delegate, and uh, I have actually never voted in these elections. I don't know whether today will be any different, but I'll see how it goes, and maybe as the day progresses, I'll decide whether or not I want to cast the ballot, because sometimes you also work for the former president. You try very much not to get too involved, and I have no doubt in my mind that... Any favorite candidates in there? You know, I have never been one of those, and I've always believed that, you know, I think it's a professional in me. I can work with anybody. You don't have to be my friend. And then when we leave here, you don't have to go home with me. If you are my friend, maybe we'll meet again. But I believe strongly that the beauty about democracy is that whoever emerges should be somebody that we can all rally around and work with. Because naturally, there will be contests. This is part of the reason why we are here. In fact, the whole process taking place in this political party today is also part of the reason why we have the 1992 constitution. A multi-party system is the reasons why we go through these elections. You will find a mother and daughter even contest against each other. And so I'm looking forward that we all rally around whoever emerges and rally around all the candidates and be sure that we have a successful delegates conference and that immediately after here, we go straight to work for power come 2024. Thank you very much. Madam Joyce Mukhtarbawa, um, there. she, she um, is the spokesperson for the former president, John Romani Mahama. And it's a good time to interact uh, with my colleagues um, from the election headquarters that will be doing this with today at the Accra Sports Stadium. And of course, uh, my colleague, Blessed Suga, is here. Samuel Kojo Brace is here. And of course, um, Samuel Imbura, uh, the two Samuels are on the ground today. And uh, Kwekwa Sante is also joining us. He's currently with the MPs trying to ga gather them uh, to get to the Accra Sports Stadium. Hello. Uh, Hello. Yeah, so <laughs> the die is cast, uh, the battle line is drawn. Whatever you've been doing um, over the past three, some have even started, uh, they started way back from, from the start of this year. Whatever you've been doing uh, as part of the process just to get some support from the grassroots and the delegates, today is the end and the verdict will tell who will turn uh, victorious. Of course, just 14 positions up for grab, over 80 aspirants. So MFI tells you what's at stake for today or tonight because we know that these processes can go all the way into the night and possibly tomorrow. We don't know what the results will be. All I can tell you is that we will be here giving you uh, up to speed information on all that's happening here at the Accra Sports Stadium. And it's getting exciting already. And that's MFA Power. They're having a conversation with our colleagues. And you want to stay with us because we'll be bringing you a round the clock coverage from the Accra Sports Stadium. And back into the studio here, we have 
Just a few minutes before News File takes over, and by the way, News File is going to be focusing heavily also on the NDC Congress, something and his team will join you uh, with that at nine. But here, we are building up now to the Congress starting just around 10 a.m. thereabout, and we are throughout the day going to be having, coming through the studios here at Joy, uh, at Joy 99.7 FM, those for us who are leaving, who are listening to us on, on radio, and here on the Joy News channel, a host of big guns, big guns in the NDC. We are tonight and throughout the day going to bring you all the interesting uh, you know, names that you haven't heard from for a long time. We're going to have coming through uh, this coverage, um, and Winston was with me. Uh, Winston, you, you spoke to Dr. Tony Yudu. Yes, Dr. Tony Yudu will be joining us in the course of the coverage. Uh, he'll be telling us his thoughts about um, the NEC's process, what he makes even of the process. So uh, later in the coverage, once the Congress has started, you'll hear from Dr. Tony Yudu. And then we'll also have Inusa Fuseni, who will join us also later today. We'll have uh, two political scientists also joining us for a conversation, uh, Dr. Alu Duseidu and Dr. Asasanti. And then I know the one that many of you have been waiting, it, it, it divides opinion. And we, uh, Raymond is smiling because he knows who I'm going to talk yeah, about. Yes, yes. It's Koku Aindu, who former Deputy General Secretary of the party. I know in the lead up to yes. this, he sort of grabbed all the headlines. There are people yes. who were not happy that we are hosting him as part of the, our coverage. But we felt, obviously, with his insight into the yeah. party, the thing you oh, want to do for our audience is, is yeah. of course, it's been there. I mean, you yeah. need somebody who can help you. The same reason why we are bringing in the likes of Tony Edu and Co. You don't have an issue with him uh, not coming at all. The show. I, I am convinced that there is nothing today that will change merely because of what Koko Indoho says. But it is important that somebody who sits at the table, who's been there, worked with both of us and Pofu, and also most of the executives that we have today. He's also worked with your very good friend, uh, General Mosquito. They have a very interesting relationship. Yeah. Somebody who's been within the ranks of the NDC. Of course, let's make clear. He clearly just two days ago retreated his position. He cannot support John Dramani Mahama. He cannot support Esiedi Ketia. He really thinks that the current chairman should maintain his role. And he's been clear on that. And by the way, except, at that point. Except there's a lot more detail in the workings of the NDC that we cannot miss merely because he has an opinion on some people. Yeah. And that's so important. Those are the kind of people that will bring you the insider information, which you will be interested in hearing anyway. Yeah. Sometimes political parties ought to look themselves in the mirror. Somebody like Tony Edu, and, and I was looking up his data the other time. If you take Larry Ajete out, Tony Edu has served on more manifesto committees than any other NDC human being existing. Mm. From 92 straight down to 2008. So clearly, they, not only does he come on to the table with a lot of experience, but also the competence in determining the thinking of the party over the years. And you've heard his complaints in times past. Yeah. So people like that are the kind of people that will help us. Of course, we are not limiting it to them. That will help us drive it. It's almost like Koku Anido is almost like having Professor Richard Amwakoba Join us in this conversation. When we cover the end. Brilliant. He's contested. He's not been an executive, but he contested elections. He's been part of the process. It is, to him, his own political party, too. And he was also very unhappy with his own yes, political yes, party. Yes, 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 yes. When but he with left. Very tough views on yeah. how things are going, even now, anyway. And he toyed to them when he was here. Uh, and he gave us fantastic insight, unique I, I mean, you were, you were, we have an interaction yes, I mean, the was, last time. We're, we're all here with him the last time. I mean, I've had these conversations wherever I have been. The fact that... Why are you bringing Koku and Yidoho in? In fact, for some persons, they said we're only bringing Koku throughout the coverage. And I said, <laughs> that cannot be the case. Anybody who's watched the election quarters knows that's not You know, I mean, you know ordinarily, I, I wouldn't explain decisions taking. But I just want to say this. So the question is, oh, but where are the other speakers? I said, these are the other speakers. I said, but we haven't seen them. I said, because you didn't want to see them. Yeah. We're not looking out for them. We're not looking out yeah. for them. The same advertisement that was done for Koku is the so same advertisement for, for the others. For the others. And so you are looking forward to listening or watching one person, you've asked questions about that person. But we have said, well, that person is going to be part of the team. You've heard from Dr. Richard Amakumba when the NPP was having its mm -hmm. Congress. You heard him calling the president and the government a failure. You heard him saying that people were not respectful and the delegates should punish them. So you can trust us and you can trust our host to ask the relevant questions and make sure that people answer the questions with decor. And that's why we have a fair blend of academics mm -hmm. and 
political insiders of the NDC. We have, as I said, Alu Duseiru, who, by the way, is the head of the political science department, yeah. the of the political science, mm -hmm. and, and correlations to him because he's... Yeah. Stepping he's, in the shoes yeah, of the uh, lives of uh, Professor Michael Ronokwe, yeah. the very distinguished Bossman, political scientist who, that we have seen, know, who's at the EC, EC now. now yes, yeah. Mami Jechirando. I mean, so, if you go through that long list, there's yeah. no more prestigious political scientist that I can find in the country than yeah. the gentleman who is the preeminent, the the preeminent uh, the the finest. president that, that, in the country. That's what we do uh, here on the election. We only bring you the finest. So the head of the uh, University of Ghana Political Science Department will join us, uh, Dr. Sassan will also join us. So they are the two uh, academics. And then we have the insiders, Inu Safuseni, the uh, Tamale, former Tamale Central mm -hmm. MP, is a chair, was a chair of the Constitutional Legal Affairs Committee, will also join us. And then we'll have Dr. Tony Edu, and then we'll have uh, Kokwa Edu. But let's start with our uh, analysis. This is why we're here. This is going to be one of the most interesting congresses. Why? Because of the build-up. And this, Winston, these are the current executives yeah. who would be exiting at the end of the day. Some of them are running for re-elections. In fact, all of them are running for re-election. Um, his fate, though, let's start with that, because we know they, as of tonight, I mean, there are questions around him. He won the, last week, the National Youth Organizer position with Five this number votes. of votes, right? 533 votes, except that just yesterday, um, he went to court and secured an injunction, yeah. which means he cannot be sworn in today. Exactly. Um, that is, that is a, a big, uh, I guess issue for the party to, to overcome. It is, it is. And we've seen the injunction. I don't know if the party has seen it, but um, once it's out there, I, I mean, I, I put in the point, I don't know if the party has seen it, because for all of us who have covered elections, there are times that parties pretend not to yeah, have seen it. And they go ahead, even and they go ahead and do yeah. the things and say, I didn't see it. As of last night, it. by the way, um, Giorgio Pariado was telling us that he's not being served. Yes. But, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Broja Jinfi, who filed the suit, was telling us that he has served the party he was going to check if Operado had been said. But it's the party, it's the that, party that matters served. the most. So once he served the party, uh, then the party knows that they cannot swear, uh, you know, uh, George Operado in. Let's see what happens today. But, you know, the most important thing, again, uh, for me is that he's not been served. If the party has been served, it means that he cannot be sworn in, all things being equal. What would that mean for the party? Well, that's the youth organizer position. They're not going to go through the legal process. Yeah. And if there's a re-election, it means they have to vote again. If there's no election, it means he gets to be sworn in. But on the whole, you ask the simple question, how would all of this affect the youth front of the NDC? Because if you're a political party going into a must-win election, you should go into the election with a unified front. That notwithstanding, it doesn't mean that if there are problems, you sweep it under the carpet. You can definitely settle those problems. But how you settle those problems matters matter the most. Mm. And, 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 and that's the most important thing for the NDC. And, and, and if you've not heard what Brother Jenfi's main concern is, he alleges that during elections, the 22 uh, 10 executives were not allowed to vote. Yeah. And he believes that those were disenfranchised. The, the, the court should rectify that. He says he's exhausted internal processes and that didn't deliver an outcome that he professed and so he went to the court. So that's a fundamental reason why. And indeed, if it's true, that 22 people who were qualified to vote did not vote, then of course he may have a case that the party will have to look into. And he's also contesting some 15 others who he believes were not qualified to vote, but they went through the process. And he's rarely looking at this from the perspective that if an Amasaman court had earlier indicated that let the 10 presidents vote, and he decided not to let them vote, but yet brought in other people in the final minute. You know this delayed the, NDC con uh, the Youth Congress, right? For almost eight hours, they were unclear how they were going to resolve this matter because the National Youth Organizer was threatening that I will withdraw from this election if you don't clarify these things. And they said, the other side was also saying, no, we have settled on the number of people voting. The delegates will share with you and you should be able to allow that to run. Then regional chairman came to do some deal, asked them to leave as candidates and then agreed and finally settled on the list. It was this list that he's contesting final, but he agreed to go through the process. He agreed to go through the election. He's saying that regardless of what happened, the entire process was fraught with irregularities, which should be straightened by the court. It will be interesting to know, because mostly they resolve these issues by first going to court, then party will say, with all the case, we can fix it. They'll say in the future, maybe we'll give you a position or help you sort it out. There's deep-seated thinking about this. The reason why ordinarily he would have let this go, and he keeps saying that because of the irregularity, no, 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 is because there are some people who believe that... Having 
the gentleman continue in that role is dangerous. Mm. Right from his post-winning yeah. speech that no senior member should call me. Then later on says, I've gone to see John Jermaine Mahama. We're on the same slate. Some people believe that Opari Adu's continual stay in that office will not help the end. And, and yesterday, that's you, why he's you know, actually get bent on getting the There's a lot to go through, so yeah. I don't want to spend too yeah, much time Let me just make this point, Evans. So you make see, quickly. yes, the other question that, and, and I, I, I hardly don't want to talk about cases in court, but I asked a simple question. If you decided to go through a process, yeah. bearing in mind that the process had challenges. That you knew of before you That you knew of tested. before you went through the process. How sure are we that the people that were disenfranchised were going to cast their vote in a certain way? Mm. They may tell you, you say these persons voted and they, they, that they shouldn't have voted. Do we know how they voted? A lot of things will come to play. And I think that in the interest of the NDC, they will settle this some way, some way. But the only challenge is this. Because the NDC has all their positions elected, Apart from the, uh, the remaining vice chairman, eventually they will do a bit of appointment. And right? directors to directors. Yeah. All the positions are elected. So if you were the NPP and you were promised a position, you could be a deputy somewhere. But in the NDC, maybe you'll be a director. But apart from that, all the positions are elected. So that's yeah. where the challenge comes in. Except that you can do a deal with him and it happens in politics that if we win elections, you know, they, but then it depends on who is making that promise. Is it the person who is likely to win in the presidential primary and that's we'll come to that how that is actually leading to the division we see and then we have another election that also so decided on saturday the women's organizer position the incumbent uh, dr hannah uh, louisa bisu won it by 433 votes and you also have the uh, likes of uh, wow. margaret uh, and Sai K coming second 362 uh, votes and you have Abigail uh, Kwabia Elom Mensa coming in at 341. And then you have Felicia. Uh, These Jupa, are dep uh, deputy uh, women organizers. Who will come in, yes. These are the deputy women organizers. For, and it here too was without its own controversy. We know that uh, Anna Bisu, even in, in victory, was, was yeah. very vocal about the machinations that happened and nearly marred the event. And so that is really what set the tone for what we're calling the clash of the titans now this is possibly the most acrimonious build-up we've had to any internal elections of any political party since i remember 992 why because of these two gentlemen involved john sassini kitia and some of and i'll start you off gentlemen one of the things i noticed when i'm looking through our research uh, for today which is that one of the reasons why this has been so acrimonious is that tonight or by the end of tomorrow whatever time this congress is done one of them will taste defeat internal elections defeat for the very first time exactly the both of them have never tasted they don't know what defeat feels like as far as contesting party elections is concerned one of them will lose out and so it is a do or die affair it is a heavyweight clash it is equivalent to what you have in boxing they call it the, the uh, they call it the undisputed bout. Exactly. Come comes into play. We are talking about Joseph Sudin Kitia and some of Usman Pofu. Evans, in, see, let me just do a bit of um, NDC uh, history because since 1992, when the Fourth Republic started, NDC was electing officials or appointing them through consensus bills. And they were having <laughs> elections every yeah. two years. So they go into a Congress. There's consensus. Mm -hmm. Then a candidate is settled on, and they had two chairmen, co-chairmen. Uh, Isif Wali and uh, Munifi eventually in 2002, after they lost election 2000, they decided to do a reorganization chaired by Obeda Samoa. Now, that was when Obeda Samoa said that they should move away from founder and leader, have just founder, and the chairman becomes the leader of the party. Mm. He also said the party should have a chairman and not co chairman. Yeah. At that Congress at the Trade Fair Center, you had Dr. Tony Edu against. The, uh, you know, the single chairman. He wanted a co-chairman. Now, now Alex Asama, who was Western Regional Chairman of the NDC at, at the time, also said, if they vote and vote to support co-chairman, he will not take part in the next election. So the NDC, first of all, voted to agree on the proposals of the committee for a chairman and the decoupling of leader and founder of the party. Now, when that was successful, Tony Edu did not vote. You also had an Alex Asama not voting. But he had even threatened he wasn't going to have his whole written executive vote. The reality is that after that election, Obeda Samoa won by 334 votes compared to Alhaji Muhammad Idrisu's 
332. But this man contested uh, as Hope. national chairman and won in that race. Mm. So in 2002... 2002, that's the first time he... First time. Know. And he was having a competitive congress. He was there. Mm. Then in 2005, he was there again. Mm. But, but I, want, I want to take you to yeah. that because that is something uh -huh. we'll come to. Yes. Uh, so at the, at the tail end, because let's do that now. Yes. That's, so that's what you're talking about. In 2002, he was there. Yeah. He won as a national organizer. And by the way, for those of us listening to us on radio, we are talking here about, you know, some of some of who's the incumbent national chairman of the party. Yeah. So he won in 2002 as national organizer. Came, won again in 2005 as national organizer. Now, after the NDC won election in 2008, he became Eastern Regional Minister, so he didn't seek re-election. But when the NDC, now still in power in 2014, he contests and becomes a national vice chairman of the NDC. And finally, in 2018, he becomes national chairman. So four times he's contested, never tasted... Never tasted defeat. He's won all of them. Now, if you go to Johnson and Sidin Ketia... No, let, let, let's... Uh, okay, you want to do that? I want to do Johnson and Sidin Ketia's also. Comparison. Yeah, comparison also. Here we are. So he shows up we go. in 2005. Now he was member of parliament for... Three years after. After Fusan Pofu. Uh, he was member of... He's been in parliament for 12 years, 12 years by this time. member of parliament for Winchi West at the time. It became time, and the time was split into Banda and time. I don't know where his original constituency <laughs> would be now. But um, in 2005, having left parliament he decides to become General Secretary of the NDC. Mind you, at that time, Dr. Josiah, the late Dr. Josiah, yeah. had been suspended yeah. as General Secretary of, uh, of, of the NDC. So you had Bid Zedin, Bid Zedin, now Member of Parliament for Laura. Mm. Yeah. Bid Zedin. Here we go. Yes, who was Acting General Secretary. Yeah, here we go. Yes. So that's, so that's, in the, that election, that's the contest in 2005. In that election, he won massively. Yeah, which, let's, let's, let's yes. go through the numbers. 75.1% of the votes. Against busy dinks, 13.2%. And he had Ntubui Siaku and Sylvester Mensah. Sylvester Mensah uh, was 4.5% uh, as against Ntubui Siaku, 7.3%. Yeah. So that is his first outing. In first Shogun. outing. Okay. He shows up again in 2010. Here we go. In uh, Tamale, 93% endorsement. So this is a, a massive jump then yeah. from 2005 to the uh, next election where he contested. Then in 2014. And, and by the way, he came up against Kwe Kwe Shan, Kwe Shan. You know. Then in uh, 2014, he comes up against um, Farrakhan. Yes, Farrakhan. Farrakhan's performance was surprising. And, and in this election, there was a slight dip in his um, percentage. Exactly. He secured from 93.7% to 80.13%. Meanwhile, Abdul uh, Farrakhan was 19.87%. And Farrakhan was a polling station executive somewhere in the Ashanti region. He showed up within the last weeks to say he wanted to be general secretary. Surprising. And it, it was surprising for him to have won, uh, to have had 19, 19 point, point, I mean... He had about over 600 votes. And at the time, at, at the Kumasi Congress, many of the watchers said the, for those who were against Johnson Nassir Ibn Ketia, who didn't want him to be general secretary, for 20% to vote against him was significant. But let's look at 2018. So, 28, the, the, the 20, so in 2018, 18, this is 2018, yes. by the way. He shows up again. Samuel Koko and Yudoho. And Yudoho. Yeah, and, and uh, there's a lot to say about this, but you... But you yes, ra ra he shows up again in 2018 and wins. Mm. Now, this man, for 17 years... Had been the General Secretary. Has of been the General Secretary of the NDC. For 17 years, he's been the CEO of the NDC, in charge of his day-to-day -day administration. For 17 years, he's been the face of the NDC. And I say he's been the face of the NDC because during the tenure of, um, you know, Dr. Kwabeneje between 2005 to 2014, Dr. Kwabeneje, in between, you had John Evans Atanos as president and John Mahama as president. And so uh, uh, once you have a president, the president assumes the leadership of the mm -hmm. party. But for Johnson and Sidun Ketia, as the CEO of the party, he did all the works and was always in touch with the party's grassroots. So having said all of this, you see here a candidate who's become the face of the NDC for the last 17 years. And, 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 by, and Raymond, quick comments on this. But just before Raymond comes in, the, the thing to note is the point about the 17 years. Yeah. He's done general secretary for 17 years. Yeah. We must note that in 2018, and by the way, just disregard this uh, slight error here. This is 2018. He comes in against Koku, who had then served under him as deputy. Yeah. The, the previous four years, Koku did not intend to contest him. If you go back to 2017, Koku is on record to have told NEET FM that Asir Nketiah had told him that he wasn't going to run 
for you know, general secretary for the next year in 2018. And that assurance is what emboldened him to declare that he was going to run for general secretary and drop out of the deputy general secretary race. And then somehow along the line in 2018, Asir Nketiah goes back on his word, changes his mind, and then decides to contest. That is the beginning of the rift between Koku and Asir Nketiah. Yeah, but that's the uh, Koku and the whole angle. That's the Koku and the whole Asirin angle. Asir says he never said that. Okay, well, it, it's, it's true. <laughs> he's maintained, he he's, never he's that. maintained that he, he, didn't, he didn't say that. And, 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 and so if you go back to that, if you believe what Koku is saying, then it appears that in 2018, he possibly wanted to ascend to become chairman. Well, before Raymond comes in, I listened, Very quickly, to, I wanna... I listened to him when he said that everybody says General Ankwa Meko. General Ankwa Meko. And it's happened even in this, so, this, this delegate's Because Congress. people keep saying if General doesn't contest as General Secretary, they will contest. He thinks it is time for him to allow others to, do. to also contest. So you could be right. You can reasonably infer that he probably may have considered it at the time and taken a decision that it wasn't right. Yeah. You can infer, press upon to but for me, I'll look at this at uh, this time and say, maybe this is the time. Ribbon. It's interesting that decision comes in now, and there are people within even his camp who are convinced he had the intention to move up, but some engagement happened, and he needed to step down. It's the more reason why along the line, he actually feels that he's perhaps the best person, most prepared person to be national chairman now. Because of the period of time he has spent in that role as general secretary, he consistently tells people that, listen, the national chairman is not the one who runs the day-to-day -day affairs of the party. I've done so. I've done so for 17 years. Even if I move out to a different position, people will still look up to me to do that job again. Mm. And the expectation is that I'm most likely going to be general secretary in principle and national chairman in reality. So that is the kind of job I want to do. And I believe if I don't do it at the top, there are decisions that I cannot take. There are also people within the rank who really think that this is he seeking to bow out. And that to him, the zenith of his political career first was possibly being the vice president, yeah, and which dropped along the line. And in this campaign, yes. we've heard the mm -hmm. Campbell, for example, when Cole say yeah. that, it, it, he, that wanted his, be, he wanted to be... He wanted to be... That was his vision anyway. Before uh, Professor Nana Jeno Pokajma was appointed, Brilliant. he was pitching in to be... Yeah, so in all of this, this is everybody thinking that Esiani Katia is probably priming himself to move out of party politics and party positions into mainstream, what they call it, presidential position. And he believes this might be, you look into the future, if the current situation happens, if let's say John Droman Mahama wins the next election and is looking for a running mate, he may decide to go with the current one and there's a huge debate of whether or not that's a very good decision. What are the other alternatives available? He believes that after John Dramani Mahama, a lot of space will open up with trust and support from a larger grouping. He is in a better position to do more than just be national chairman. So to him, help him win this election. And he used to have a very good reputation of winning elections until his recent engagements became problematic. Help him win this election at the top of the party. And he keeps going around saying that there are decisions that the national chairman will take. That if you do not have a strong person, a strong world person, a person who is rightful in his mind about what to do, you get problems along and the line. And that's why in his leak tape, by the way, it's, it, he's now owned up to it, so we can speak Fully, publicly yes. about it. He blames Chairman of Oswam Poffo. And by the way, I want to focus on that because of over time, uh, because yeah. we've done a bit of the um, Asiri here. He blames Oswam Poffo for the collapse of their collation system because he appointed, he alleged he appointed uh, an individual who set the thing up, and so ultimate responsibility. If you listen to him close in there, he says, well, I'm the general secretary, they all report to me. But that appointment was, for example, of his appointment. And, and that structure was his. And it, it, it came against uh, uh, JM's, I guess, own thinking about the approach to, to, to making that appointment. If you, if you observe the bickering, the mad slinging that had gone on between the two gentlemen, it tells you a story, and when we went back there, this is a man who has, well, a combination of 20 years, a combined number of 20 years, with the exception of some, you know, past where he moved to become a minister and came back at the helm, always at the, you know, national organizer or national vice chairman, and then moves into that position. If I advance, he tells everybody that he's 60, a little bit around 60. Half of that period, he spent his serving the party. Party. That's what he's been saying everywhere. You know, and, and he's, he's in his head, has seen 
the general secretary's position to become synonymous with the Sailing Gitia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the chairmanship position, because he moved from vice chairman in 2014, yeah. contested in the, in the chairmanship position, as you see on the, on, the, on the smart wall there, in 2018, before the national organizer twice, right? So he moved here and settles. He was not anticipating that General Mosquito will challenge. That's why the, this narrative has emerged. And uh, Sailing Gitia consistently denies that, that somehow he was called to say, this time, don't go. Stay in your general secretary's position. Let me let him stay in the chairmanship position because you can't put two elephants in one room and expect that the room will keep standing, which is really what has happened, and we've seen the fallout. To be fair to uh, you know Johnson as he didn't get here, Evans, if you've been general secretary for 17 years and everybody says, oh, if general doesn't contest, I will contest. If general doesn't contest, I'll contest. It will get to a point where you become the problem as general secretary. You're blocking other people's You're chances. Blocking other people's chances. You've been general secretary. The party's lost elections twice. Okay, don't forget that. I yeah, mean, that's key. That, that, don't forget that. That you've been general secretary. You're no longer the task. You came, of yeah, you came in at the time as general secretary. The party won the election. Mm -hmm. Then the party won the election again in, uh, you know, 2012. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Then in 2014, uh, 2016, still as general secretary, the party lost. The party came back and the party still lost. You were campaign chairman. And that's very instructive. Yeah. Campaign chairman in 2020. And so even though General is making the point that he's done this, but you're a campaign chairman. You played a major role in the election. You cannot exonerate yourself from any election. Collectively, they take full responsibility. Take full responsibility. But if you go back also, this is why this election is very, very critical. In 2005, Samuel Fusu uh, won again as a national organizer. Mm -hmm. In the 2008 elections that the NDC won, mm. who takes the credit, for instance? So he's national organizer. Johnson Asiri Nketiah is general secretary. They all went into the election as members of the core executive yeah. of the NDC. Yeah. You were supposed to organize. I was supposed to manage the affairs of the party in ensuring that the party became victorious. You have Dr. Kwabneji, who was chairman of the party at the time, leader of the party, to ensure that the party won. So these two persons, like you started the introduction with, one of them would taste defeat for the first time. And since 2000. And two, you had one of them, not two. Some of the first started in 2002, and Johnson and Senkete had joined. So every time the NDC has gone to Congress since 2000, two of them have been there. One of them has been there. Yeah. So, I mean, um, uh, National Chairman of Usambafu was there in 2002. Johnson and Senkete joins in 2005. And then from there, he leaves in 2010, comes back in 2014, and is there till now. So you begin to appreciate what is what, what, what the point we are trying to let you appreciate is that at the end of this Congress, one of them will lose their political life support. Because as it is tonight, both of them are there in the ICU. The delegates will decide who lives and who dies. That is really what this is about. That is why this has become so acrimonious. The washing of the dirty lily in public, there's desperation. Because this, at the end of this, the outcome, there's no coming back. Just watch what has happened to the other, in the other party, even the NDC, when you climb to national chairman and general secretary and you lose, you fall off. Of course, yeah. you don't have to come. You, you completely yeah. fall off the face of the earth. Just ask a setting, John Buedu. You're finished. You know, you're, you're completely gone. So you cannot afford to lose this. And this, the, the challenge he's going to have, he's not experienced before. I said that has not come up against this opposition. Yes. Before, as we've got. Now, let's look, let's look through this. 2018, that is uh, uh, for Swan last contest. Yeah. When he became the chairman. He came up with a damn that we formidable. Yeah. Right? And if you look at the numbers on your screen, it tells you, and that's why I, I think he, people underestimate. A lot of people think, I said, okay, that should win this, right? But if you look at his numbers and the kind of quality opposition he came up against, Hudu Yaya. Hudu Yaya was there, oh, right? And he secured 43.80%. Some of us are powerful. Dana Bodakwi, 26.30%. Hudu Yaya, 21.90%. Of course, Betty Modidrisu was also there at 4.30%. And Danny Annan at 3.60%. Uh, the point we are making with this graph, with this particular visual, is that to win against this kind of opposition, you don't do it by just being a feeble political opponent. Let me tell you, let me opponent. tell you something about Hudu Yaya. Now, Hudu Yaya for a very long time was general secretary of the NDC. Yeah. Okay, so when all of us were growing up at the time, when in current affairs, you if asked, I threw who, out the co-chairmanship, exactly. Yeah. Who, yeah. who is the general secretary of the NDC? You say Alaj Hudu. It just rolls off your tongue. Now he became vice chairman in 2002. Mm -hmm. 
came back and that's when that's when of Osama Pofu was the national, national organizer. organizer. So he now rises to become vice chairman and decides to be vice chairman again in 2005 and 2010. Then he decides to be chairman in 2014. To be very honest with you, you were on the grounds. Yeah, I was on the ground, and he was the candidate. Yeah. He was going to win that election until the last minute when he stepped down. And for some watchers, we said it was because he had a candidate, John Mahama, from the north. Yeah. And you're not going to have a chairman from the north. And so if the NDC is accusing the NPP of being an account party, and you are also going to do a similar thing, it wouldn't augur well for you. So why don't you have a Gadangbe becoming chairman? And that's how come he stepped down, bearing in mind that if he steps down, Kofi Potofi was going to win that election. So ordinarily, you're expecting him to have won in 2014. So when he shows up again in 2018, you think this is a done deal for him. And yet, and yet, Ofusopo this Ofusopo man defeated him. To it. So that tells us a lot. I mean, and, and quick comment on, on some of Ofusopo for considering, and we'll wrap up with the two of them, and then tell you the other, uh, you know, uh, contest that you, could, you should look forward to today. It, 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 let me start off with a difficult question. So we've seen their records in the party. Yeah. Who wins? In all fairness, I would have stuck my neck out and said, well, I see the is just already on his way to winning. But there's a surprise someone for some people comes to this table with. Let's not miss words. Today, the biggest attack on him is that people are beginning to feel within the NDC that he's somewhat compromised. That perceived yes. tagging and, and that, has been trumpeted and, and, and for so long. It's become the main campaign too because it appears to be yielding the results that, but even though there may not be a lot of credence to it, nobody has some, the some evidence even pretend and suggest that, well, the man is being prosecuted one way or the other. He is perhaps cutting a deal with the government in one way or the other so that we can, and we cannot have a man who is distracted and not focused on the job doing so. But his history has not suggested somebody who's easily compromised. No. So, yes. So, but this is politics. They are Perception can be reality. Yeah, it, it, and, and you see, they are actually also straining it. That, oh, he doesn't even really have a wonderful relationship with the candidate, that we, the presumptive candidate. And that is why both of them have been clear to try and pitch their Brilliant. tents in John Muhammad's camp. Yeah, so it is, it is things working against him. The, the issue to do with it, then I would have been in the would be our case, was that in all fairness, if they had come together and chosen one of the candidates, it would have been a greater fight against Ofusu Ampofo. I see in Ketia, again, he himself, mindful of how his last contest went, it was not so clear that if he stayed as general secretary, he was still going to continue in his winning ways. Mm. Finally, this race is going to be determined by the group that falls outside. We do not necessarily think the NDC may win the election. That group. If that group says that, we are in support of Samuel of Osampofo, he may stay. If that group says that we are not supporting Samuel of Osampofo, he's in trouble. There's a group currently within the end that's looking into the future. That group is where the main undecided votes really are. Mm. And that group is controlling delegates. Yeah, I mean, but if you will come, we'll end, by, we'll end by telling you what the NDC's future prospects look at. Let's quickly wrap up with yeah. the general secretary position. And there too, you have... Uh, I, was, I was going to talk about who will win, but I'll skip that. For yeah, we'll, 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 that, we'll that was the last question. Oh, but you have said it already. That's the last it. question okay, before it. we hand yeah. over to <laughs> something. <Yeah. laughs> but then you have yeah. another important, keenly contested one is the general secretary position where you have uh, Wesley Free Ankara, you have uh, Fifi uh, Fiavi uh, and then you have uh, Peter Bomo Tokuno. Uh, again, this is going to be very interesting. All the three gentlemen are formidable, yeah. formidable politicians in their own right. Um, they, I, I think the, the disadvantage slightly is in Fifi, Fifi Kwete's uh, side. In politics, you are as good as your last performance, yeah. as your last contribution to the party. He's been out of the scene for a while, yeah, right? Because you have these two gentlemen who recently, they have recent memory of yes. contributing um, and, he, and, he, he, in he, the he, last election. His last role was member of parliament. He didn't exactly, agree. you know, and as member of parliament, sadly for Fifi. So it's, it's he the tried, ability he tries to, to change to use that. the face of Fifi Kwete, you know, because he had and some thought a propaganda as politics for good. Yeah. Propaganda as he, he tried to rebrand, rebrand, rebrand. And that has not helped him, you know, because people really celebrated him. The party liked him, setting the record straight, etc. This man, is seen by many as a natural successor to Johnson as he didn't get Well, I am sure Peter Momotoko will have a lot to say about but that. But as one who's watched elections, yeah. don't always be 
I mean, quick to stick your neck out. Yeah, yes. this man yeah, can absolutely. string a surprise. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, but he yeah. is a deputy. Yes, he's a deputy, so he's in he the position a surprise. He's, can be, he seemed very can confident be the last time. He appears to have the blessing of Johnson and Sierra Ketia. Well, well, the last time he, I saw him, he was very confident. Yes. No, but well, it's interesting. Say he had a yeah, he, he had appears a, to have when, the blessing. When I, when I interviewed okay. Elvis here, he told me that. Um, it was Jonathan Ketia who told him, listen, I'm not going to go. That's what inspired him to go. You know, and he speaks glowingly about Jonathan Ketia. This is the thing. This is the thing about Elvis. I mean, people had expected Elvis to be general secretary, right, from 2014, uh, 2018. Yeah. They were expecting Elvis to be general That's secretary. Changed. So now that he's shown when up... When he was deputy previously. Yes, but now that he's shown up, you probably will think this is his time. But also... Elvis identifies with a lot of groups. Yeah, and grassroots, time, the youth. I would show you, for instance, even his multilingual capacity mm -hmm. and how th that resonates mm. with voters because he could be everywhere and still relate with the voters nicely. In the end, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it boils down to which person is best placed to help the NDC win the 2024 elections. And if you look at this graph here, I want to take you to the extreme end of this, where you're standing, Winston. And this is where this whole comes down to. This end here. This is, this is all that matters. Because going into 2020, 2024, mm -hmm. the, the momentum is on the side of the NDC. As you see the graph line telling you that the gap is closing, they are catching up. And each time that has happened, each time the gap begins to close, the opposition party tends to win elections yeah. after eight years. And so it's a question of who can get the party over the line. And the question is who? Well... Evans, so let's ask that question. Be, before we, we, before we I have a few seconds. No, Tessa, we have a few seconds. Uh, uh, who? I, I need to do a bit of analysis. Chairman. So, but I say this. I say this. Let, let me just do it in 30 seconds. I say this. Having been the face of the party for 17 years, mm -hmm. Johnson Asidu Nketiah clearly is the favorite. Samuel Ufusu Ampofu is the underdog going into this election. But this is but a position he, that he holds. This is he, the, but he, he holds is that still the underdog in this election. He can spring a surprise, and it will not be a surprise. That's a, that's a thing to say. That's all the thing to say. Listen, I know you have a lot to say, Raymond. I have a lot to say as well. I also have a lot there's, to say. When we yeah, yeah, of course. There's, <laughs> there's more reset to pour through for you. Uh, Samson Lala Yinini in this panel will join you right now after here. And then from 12, we'll return with a, a second set of panel, which will be, um, of course, there you'll see my colleague Benjamin hosting uh, you know, and then we'll have my other colleagues taking over throughout the day, shifting the pack and bringing the very best of coverage. So join us throughout until whenever when we hear the results. News file starts right now.